You told me a funny story last night. Yeah. We were talking Nobel laureate in, mm -hmm. in economics that you had talked with, who, who was convinced that the value of money was uh, not attached in any fundamental <laughs> sense to the structures of the real world in, in the manner that you claim it is. And you told me that he didn't know that there was genuine natural variation in in crustal abundance of different metals. That's right. So yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. so so this was a Nobel laureate who said, uh, and it is recorded somewhere, um, that the reason that copper uh, is valued at X and gold is valued at Y is just subjective. You know, people have decided to value copper at this level and gold at that level. And I responded by saying, but don't you think it's a bit mysterious that the the price of copper reflects the same crustal abundance of copper. Mm -hmm. In other words, mm. copper is 5,000 times more abundant than gold in the Earth's mm. crust. And if you look at the price of copper per ton in the market, it's mm. roughly 5,000 times. Right, 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 right. Well, this is a key <laughs> gold, point. Sorry, gold this, is 5,000 times more expensive. Right, than well, and this now. is yeah. a key point, right? Because that was part of what clued you into the, fa to the idea that value per se, including financial value, was not merely something that was subjectively determined, that it also bore a relationship to something like abundance and ease of access. Now, there's an interaction between the two, but the, the fact of that abundance in your hypothesis places an intrinsic constraint on the parameters within which pricing might vary. And is, an, a, a, is a, what, what do you, a data point that, that should usefully be taken into account both practically and conceptually. And, and it's important here because partly what we're trying to understand is what is the relationship between human systems of value, that would be pricing, and the actual natural world as such. And, and that's like a that's like a an investigation into the relationship between brute empirical reality mm -hmm. and the domain of philosophical value, right? So it's a crucial, it's a crucial issue. And and it, and practically it would be well, it might help you invest better, and then you'd know what to do with your money, but it's also crucial conceptually. And so, okay, so now you 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 also said to me at at one point that there is a rough equivalence in the ratio of the value of metals to one another across time in relationship to their relative abundance. And so with silver, you see the same thing with silver in relationship to gold that you see with copper in relationship to gold. Silver's rarer than copper. Yeah, we, we never wake up one morning and see that uh, an asteroid really did hit and these relationships were appended entirely. We, we never really see that, um, you know, all of a sudden, uh, uh, you know, zinc becomes the rarest element, mm -hmm. you know, or, or or aluminum becomes the rarest element. We, we go back in history and what we see is that um, something like gold was always understood for its intrinsic natural attributes, but also as being extremely rare. And that there are certain things that are more abundant than gold and yet uh, closer to gold in rarity than they are to something like oxygen. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I see that as a kind of natural order, a natural right, law. Right. Well, yeah, it's, it's so a you, limit that's imposed on us. You think that there's a us. natural reason why people, for example, gravitated towards gold and silver and bronze often, but that's copper that's right. essentially <laughs> as hallmarks of monetary value. Right. That's that they right. were that that was an attempt, a, an attempt. What would you say? practical and conceptual to tie the system of abstract value to some underlying natural phenomena to keep the value system pegged to the structure of the world. I, I would say it a little different. I would say that there was no notion of abstract value, that basically you would have these different commodities that were produced um, for their utility, for their usefulness. And as they were being produced, uh, rather than having a coincidence of wants or barter or some kind of inefficient system, uh, people recognize that each one of these commodities were a common measure and of reward the value. of the other ones. Right. In other words, I can uh, trade you two bushels of corn for one gram of copper. And then eventually, and that wasn't an abstraction. That was it's an not, actual. It's a balance scale. That was an scale. even trade of intrinsic yeah, value. It's it's literally a balance scale that's weighing the weight of these two different commodities. Mm -hmm. And then eventually, right. what happens? That's, so that's not precisely only social contract dependent. No, it's not. Mm -hmm. This is this is basically just. Uh, I would say it's metabolize, metabolization at some point. It's it's you have some energy that I need, right. and I'm going to give you something that you need. Um, and we're mm -hmm. basically helping each other. We're nourishing each other's mm -hmm. souls. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but but the thing is that at some point, one of these things begins to be the de facto measure for all the other things. Mm -hmm. 
And so that is what you see with metallic money, uh, whether it's gold or silver or bronze or even iron in some some uh, civilizations. But you know, it's important to remember that every civilization that deserves the name civilization in the historical record would have had a metal as money and would have had a monetary unit which had a weight rather than some abstract nominal value like a dollar or five dollars. Mm-hmm. It would have been something like a pound. So, you know, a pound in this country, sterling means silver. A pound is a weight of silver. That's what the pound would have been. Um, so so I was figuring all of this out um, and the, it actually led me to a, a, a real appreciation of the exemplary qualities of this one element, which was gold. 